Hey tarot friends, I hope everyone is making the most of the super pink moon in Libra energy. So we've had that full moon today and uh, that's the 7th as I'm recording. Sun card of course starting us off here, which is beautiful. And I'm sure that by the time this goes up and is, is posted, it will actually be the early morning hours of the 8th. But of course, we will still be experiencing that Libra full moon energy and for some time, super full moon, right? The hangman. Let me focus this for us. Yeah. The hangman. Sorry about the little bit of shaking there. Patience and perspective are required now. Suggesting that, you know, a lot of us are having trouble being patient, waiting to find out um, what's next, what the best move to make is, what the, the next best move to make is. There's also a suggestion here that, that, you know, if patience and perspective are called for, that we are lacking um, a clear perspective of what's going on. Pisces and now Libra energy here. Of course, it makes sense that the perfect sense that the justice card would come through in this reading since it is Aries season and this super pink moon is in is in Libra. This is a Libra full moon. And this is a Libra card. The Libra energy is always carried right along with the justice card for me. And truth and clarity are noted here. So it looks to me like truth and clarity are available. They are around, right? They are there to be seen around this time, around this full moon. It's, it's, uh, the querent here, uh, the message that, um, those at, at the center of the situation just don't have the best perspective of the, the, that truth, that clarity, or are just choosing not to look at it. The justice card for me also always carries the message the guidance to allow the precise and impartial truth, what you're certain is undoubtedly true, to then cut away the untrue and find um, the most accurate and objective whole total picture that you can that way through allowing the precise and impartial truth to cut away the untrue. But again, I, I see that this requires patience. And so an acceptance in that, right? So if we are willing to show this patience, right, it will mean that we first of all have shown an acceptance that we need to be patient, that we don't have all of the information in, in uh, the situation that, that, that faces us presently, that, that we don't have all the, the answers in either direction, um, meaning what's come before or what is to come next, 
Um, and again, there's the message here of the truth being available and needing to allow the, the portion of it that we do enjoy the precise and impartial parts that we do enjoy to cut away the untrue things. And you notice, you know, the, the hanged man here is what, what is this? A, a grasshopper. A praying mantis. And then we have this, this bird, this crow, blackbird. In, in any case, an insect or insect like creature here and this bird creature here, this tiny, small snack of a creature and a possible potential predator flying overhead. So these truths and these clarities are like that. They're, they're there. Um, that gives me the notion that they're things that we may be able to sense in, um, in other ways, know these things, feel these things, uh, discern these things, but we cannot directly see them. They are around us. And we, we take the pieces we can and allow that to cut away the untrue things right? Because they're out of shot. They're circulating around us, above us. Um, it's something, it's something larger, larger than us that we can't get our sights on, um, from the angle we're at, right? From a, from a, from a low focused type of position like this, this, um, is it a praying mantis would be here? Now I'm, I'm, uh, definitely really interested in, um, more about what, what the praying mantis might symbolize too, because it's not as though it's a bad perspective or a bad position to be in, but how could it possibly enjoy um, you know, all the honest viewpoints, all the knowledge of the, the birds experiences here. And I think that that's where a lot of, um, our anxious energy as a collective comes from at this time. This fear that there's a, uh, um, this, this fear, this feeling that there is a predator of sorts at large, right? And it is, it's something that we, we can't, um, keep our eyes on, right? That we can't pin down. So many are, you know, we're, af we're afraid of, or I guess I mean to say led by our fear of something that's just in the air around us. Right. But this is, this is also reframing that there is also truth and clarity that is circulating like that as well. And it is just as seemingly unattainable. It's acting the same way. The truth, the clarity regarding the situation for us is acting the same way. Um, and this may be, you know, applying to the, our, our global situation at large. Yes, that keeps coming to mind as I'm going through this, but also uh, may apply to, 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 um, us all in some specific personal ways as well. We have the emperor showing up, the shaman card showing up, this is the uh, Spirit Song Tarot deck by Paulina Cassidy, if I hadn't already mentioned that. Beautiful deck. I love this deck. One, two, three, four. 
Okay. The Empress. So the Shaman card here is very much like, um, well, it is. It's the, the, the hair font card. Seven of Feathers and the Three of Feathers both resurface for us again. I saw those when shuffling and meditating with the deck, and now I don't, I can't remember for sure if it was on the recording. I don't think it was, but I did see them. And another seven, the seven of shells. So 77 may be particularly significant for us around this time, may hold an additional message for some of us. Um, 33 as well, we have another three, the three of acorns, three of fire on the bottom of the deck. That also may hold an additional message or even 333 because we also have that Empress card. So we'll see if we um, even end up needing these clarifiers here with all of these cards we have. But I won't forget that this Seven of Wands is here on the bottom of the deck for us already. There we go. So we actually have three sevens as well. Because of the bottom of the potential clarifier deck here. Seven of shells, seven of feathers, seven of wands here. So really in those numbers, those triples, those three, three, the three, 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 and the seven, 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 I see this re-emphasis on urging us toward creation and faith, relying on our faith. In ourselves, yes, but specifically here I see in the divine, we have divine wisdom noted on this shaman card, which was the first message of, of looking toward uh, our faith and in what it is that we personally find to be divine in our lives. At the, at the start of the reading here in this first row, I see also transition and insight. I see a, a transition that, uh, again, we as individuals need to go through here. And I think a lot of that may have to do, again, with having the faith to move forward as, as creators in something. Maybe there's a specific project you're already working on or just one that you've been thinking about. It looks like above all else, it's going to require this focus and stability from us, a, a deep commitment as well. And I think that that's the order that it needs to go in for, for most of us anyway. But yes, I do think that is the order it needs to go in. Um, or at least that's the order that the reading is suggesting it should go in here. This, the, the guidance is first to find the focus and the stability. So, for example, is this a project that requires funds or does it just require time? Does it require uh, you to delegate certain tasks out to um, others or are you working on this alone? Regardless, you still need this, this focus, right, which will come from, as we would have, had been talking about before an acceptance that you're going to need to continue to be patient, that you're not going to have all the information that you need to move forward, that you want 
to move forward, right? Um, or that you feel that you need to move forward. An acceptance that, no, you don't have um, maybe the perspective even that you need, but the truth and the clarity is there to be found. Um, and so we're going to have to work with intuition, insight, and undergo the, the transitions that are required. So for some of you, that might mean a physical move or relocation somewhere to deal with your current situation. But for others, we're just talking about solely uh, internal transitions. Again, having specifically to do with the insight that you are able to clearly pin down as true. Allow that precise and impartial truth to then cut away the untrue. Relying heavily on your, your faith in what is divine to you is the way I really want to phrase it. And where you find your source of spiritual power, spiritual wellness. So we're starting with that, the focus and the stability, the structure. Do you have everything that you need to move forward uh, with what it is that you'd like to build? Is everyone who's involved clear on their role? Do you have, have the time, but also the calm, the patience, the acceptance of what, what limitations your perspective has? Then once that structure is, is built, which also includes what are you building? Why are you building it? What is your goal? And what is your resolve? Then we move into including that faith that we, we started to jump into talking about. Relying on the divine wisdom within you, but also... Uh, divine wisdom that you feel is part of those those truths, that clarity that you can't yet enjoy. Because there will be blind spots. There will be these truths that you still don't, don't understand. There will be parts of your own transition uh, that are unclear to you. And so you can... Um, structure how you're going to move forward. Um, but then before you get begin to nurture whatever it is that you are creating, that you are building, there, there are, there is a gap where you need um, help that's help that you can't see where it's going to come from, but also help that you don't even know that you need, right? Um, so you need help that's unknown to you, that is, that is beyond the veil, that is um, unavailable to you, to your knowledge that is, um, divine in some sense, um, to you. Or again, at least just to, you know, accept that something, someone else will have to fill in, in uh, those types of gaps for you in working on this project. There's this sense of, uh, there is this, this clear sense of the divine, something unseen bridging the, the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which are both on the board here. The Empress showing up as well as specifically beauty and abundance noted in this particular depiction. It looks like this um, creation puts her ahead of a predator. This seven of air holds the keywords preparation and resourcefulness, but I'm feeling like those things are really belonging to this, this empress who's sort of ahead of her foe here. would be foe right with it with its back on her certainly an indication to me that again that we can be looking in the wrong direction
in trying to be so prepared. We may inadvertently give our energy, our power away to the wrong types of preparations and um, almost rob ourselves of the opportunity to re rely on our own innate uh, resourcefulness. This for me is really relating to this need to transition and it, it's not showing up as the death card. It is showing up as, um, the, the six of, of feathers, the six of air. So it's, it, it's speaking of transition, not necessarily transformation, but this is one that it almost feels and looks like a transformation of sorts. And I think that that's the difference between whether or not we are ahead of the game, whether or not we are prepared or are um, resourceful enough even to be preparing in the right ways, spending our energy in the right ways, right? It is whether or not we are willing and successful in going through this transition that is much like a transformation for a lot of us. Um, We are definitely collectively feeling, agreeing that we're in a space that um, feels like something is, is, is being taken from us. It feels like we need to defend something, defend ourselves, stand up for what we believe in. Again, prepare in the right ways, transform in the right ways. Above all else, this is asking for an open mind and a, a, a willingness to rely on the divine for the aerial points of view that we need to enjoy but, but cannot need to, um, we feel almost blind at this point without, but we, we are unable to see from every angle on our own. And I think that for a lot of us is part of what we're transitioning into is, is a state of being able to see a lot more of that at least. This is heading toward release, recovery, choice, and ambition. If you can see those keywords noted here at the end of the reading. But it's not without a need to be cautious. It's not without a reason to heal, to recover, to begin with. There's, there's there's heartache, there's heartbreak, there's pain, there is harsh communication, there is sneakiness, a uh, tendency for, for, um, someone involved here to to hide to move move with stealth and it seems to lead directly to that uh heart pain heartache heartbreak um and the and the upright message of, of this version of this card to me is that the release and recovery are inevitable 
this pain must be moved through in order to release that, uh, or I'm sorry, reach that release and recovery. So maybe just to release the recovery, right? So there's a need to to match someone in preparation and resourcefulness and move through the pain that leads to release and recovery here is what seems to be in this creator's way uh, as she bounds forward toward all of the choices that her creation, his creation, that this work uh opens up for them but there's this necessary journey um or these these inevitable obstacles at least to be contended with along the way and we see ambitions noted here we see foresight and exploration on the bottom of the three of fire so this is all about this reading is seems to be about moving ahead with confidence, certainly not arrogance, but confidence. Taking the next step in the direction that you've already chosen. But with the foresight of where this path is leading, I can't tell you exactly what all of these choices are. I suppose that depends on what your specific ambitions are, yes? But I think this is, again, why we're told to build the structure first. Be sure that you have the emotional and mental focus available, the time, the resources, the help available, the vision the know-how, and know what you are building, why you are building. Ask all the, the you know, reporter questions, right? With that foresight, then, this exploration becomes safer. And it's not, it doesn't look like it's enough. I mean, we know this in any creation, really. It's, it's not enough without this, especially at this time, without this, well, it's especially blatant to more of us at this time, right? But it's, it, the structure is all for naught without this reliance as well and faith in really, um, A divine point of view that we just aren't capable of enjoying at this time. Our connection to it, our ability to access it, certain parts of it at certain times perhaps. It all overall seems to naturally flow, of course, from just this acceptance that, that it's there to begin with. Those, the, you know, that unknown wisdom, whether or not you believe the guidance is available to you or are ready to accept it. And, you know, how it shows up and, and how that process, that journey unfolds for you will be different for, and has been, I'm sure, is different for each individual. But this message to embody what it is you're trying to create seems to be consistent across the board, though, regardless of, of how the details shake out. We're, we're looking to create this beauty and abundance, and the reading seems to say to be that beauty and abundance that you are looking to create. 
Don't explore in search of it. Explore as it would explore. Don't bound through these obstacles um, so that you can reach that beauty and abundance. You will bound through them because you are bound through them with beauty and abundance. And so then the choices that are become available once you've embodied this energy that you already know in, in your mind, in your heart, it's already very close to you, are, are mysteries to you. And with that, I do think that we've gotten out the messages that we were meant to hear, at least many of them anyway. And so we will leave it there as far as the messages that we need to hear for the collective on the day of and surrounding the day of this super pink full moon in Libra. Thank you as always for all of your support to the channel. I do hope that the needed insight was able to reach you here. And if you are interested in personal readings, just scroll down to the description box down below. I love you all, and I will be back with another lunar pool for us very soon. Take care.